Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Pompoween. Today I'm doing something that I'm super excited about and I don't really know what to call this look. It's going to be a dragon, a warrior, badass, I don't really know, because she's wearing a dragon, but she also is part dragon. I don't know if she's a dragon slayer or maybe she absorbs the dragon's powers when she slays them. That's a good backstory. I don't know. <laughs> but I'm also really excited because I'm collaborating with some amazing people. Once I'm done getting ready, I'm headed to a photo shoot to shoot with a photographer whose work I have admired for years and with a costume designer and cosplayer who I also absolutely love her work and I am so lucky to call her a dear friend of mine. I'm gonna be shooting with Martin Wong and Michelle D'Antonio, aka Miss Yeru, is doing the wardrobe. Okay, so I gotta start getting ready because I have a timeline limit on this look because I have to get to that photo shoot so I'm gonna jump straight into it but before I begin please don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already and please check out the works of everyone that I mentioned I'm gonna leave all their info linked down below as you can see I've already gone ahead and covered up my eyebrows I've also done foundation on half my face because this half is going to be a normal human half and I use the dose of colors meet your hue foundation and the meet your hue concealer and then I contoured with the melt powder sculpt stack if you don't know how to cover your brows and want to learn I have a whole tutorial on how to do that that you can watch by clicking right up here. The only difference between what I did in that tutorial and now is that I added a layer of orange color corrector. In between the layers of glue, I used the Kimchi Chic Beauty one. And then I also sealed everything with a layer of Prosade, which is a prosthetic adhesive. And that allows makeup to go over the brow cover a lot better. So I'm actually going to be basing myself off of a previous look that I've done. And it's the snake makeup that I did. And that was based off of an RBFX prosthetic. But today I'm concentrating it just around the eyes and I'm going to change the shapes around a bit and I'm going to do a different color scheme. It's all going to be grays and silvers. The entire costume is all grays and silvers, all because of my new hair and my new extensions, thanks to Bellamy. And the hair is actually partly why I wanted to do this costume. I just wanted something that felt really badass because I just feel really badass when I'm wearing them. But anyway, I digress. So if you've watched that tutorial, all the steps I'm going to do today are going to be very similar. They're just going to be a different placement and a slightly different design. But today I'm gonna try out the new NYX SFX cream color. I don't know if the formula is new or just the packaging is new. They used to come in a round packaging but now they've got like a nice little palette. I'm gonna start off with the white and just kind of planning out where the scales are going to be. I'm using a flat synthetic brush for this and I'm just basically going to plan out where each scale is going to be. And for this I want it seemed almost like the scales are an eyebrow. Like I want them to be very arched here because it helps with the whole badass look. And I'm trying to keep it symmetrical, but I'm also not too worried if it's not symmetrical because this is supposed to be organic, you know, things aren't always super symmetrical. I really want to make sure I widen the top of the bridge of my nose. So I really want to highlight kind of the sides of this area right here. Anything that I can do to really kind of just change my features, I'm going to try to do it. And then I also want to have very high dragon cheekbones. So I'm going to do some scales over here and they're going to get smaller as they kind of reach the center of my face. And I'm also going to do some like ridges here on the forehead. And I know that there's like a Star Trek alien that has these ridges. That's not what I'm going for. Rude. That's not what I'm going for, but similar, I guess. Then I also do want some scales under my eyes, although much smaller ones. Okay, I decided to switch over to a much smaller brush so that I can actually be precise with what I'm doing and really just try to map out these smaller scales. I'm also doing like little mini horns. And then I'm just basically filling any little gap with like a tiny little scale. So like even here, I might have little tiny ones. Now I'm going to take the black from the palette and start doing the shading. And I'm going to use this to help accentuate the scales and to really try and change the shape of my face. Actually add kind of like another scale over here, like a little brow bone highlight pretty much. And I'm probably going to bring this down further along my nose, but for now I'm going to leave it right there. And even though I drew the scales in the white, I might change them up still. So like with the shadow color, kind of finding new contours to the face and seeing what works. So this might change a little bit. 
just by doing that, you can already see the definition, what it's going to look like. And I just really want to kind of accentuate the high points of the face. Like here with this shadow, you can see how it's going to shape up in the end. So in this stage is kind of where you define the structure, like the bones of the makeup look. And once the main structures are kind of outlined, I can use a much lighter wash of black to start doing some slight shading how I did here. I just really spread it out and then here as well. Okay, now I'm just going to slightly fill in kind of the little gaps. I know you might be thinking like, oh, why did you draw the scales in the first place? That was just so I could get a sense of placement, but now I can fill this in a little bit just so there's no skin peeking through, except for here. Here I want it to start fading into the skin, and I'm still kind of undecided on what to do in my under eye area. Still haven't quite figured that out, but sure I'll figure it out eventually. <laughs> And you can also see this isn't like the brightest white in the world. I'm not doing a super thick layer. I kind of want to keep it sheer so that I can add white highlight on top and it'll pop. Because once you reach a certain saturation in white, then you can't go whiter, so you can't highlight. So I'm trying to keep it a sheer down white for now. So now I'm actually going to powder everything. I'm just using some translucent powder in this little bottle. You don't have to do this. I just like doing this so that it doesn't move any of the cream. I do this especially when using grease paints so that they don't move around. And then I make sure everything's really set with the brush. Ah, oh, it's in my eye. Okay, now I'm going to take my black wool face paint on a very thin liner brush and a very long liner brush. This one's great for doing long, consistent lines. How many times is the trash going to get picked up while I do this tutorial? And I'm going to start tracing the scales. And here's where I'm really going to give them their shape. And here I got to be pretty precise. And you can even do smaller scales between the bigger scales. That helps to add a bit of texture. And it breaks it up a little bit. And this is, I'm not going to lie, a very tedious process. Because you kind of just have to draw each one, one by one. If you just do like a horizontal line and then a bunch of vertical lines, it's not going to look great. Not going to lie to you. It won't look realistic. It won't look organic. If you mess up, try to clean it up while it's still wet. I've actually decided to divide these bigger scales into little smaller ones. I think it just looks better. It looks more interesting. There's more detail there. So I'm really just going with the flow here. So I know you don't want to sit here and watch me do this all day. So through the magic of editing, I'm going to make it go by really, really fast. And then as I get towards the nose, I'm making them further apart and more sparse. So I kind of want it to look like they're fading into the skin. Okay, I think I've finished the outline for now. I still haven't decided what I'm going to do in my under eye area but we're moving on. Next, I'm gonna start shading all the scales using the Lunatic Cosmetics Labs Contour Palette Volume 2. I'm gonna use these lovely grays here on the side, and I think I'm just gonna start with this darkest one. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to shade the bottom half of the scales, starting in the middle and just bringing that shadow down, but I'm not taking the shadow all the way to the edge of the scale. I'm leaving like a little light gap right there. Let me zoom you guys in because that'll probably be better. But the shading is just taking the gray on a little pencil brush and then just kind of doing a line down the middle like so. And you can already see that helps immensely. And then with these ones up here, I'm gonna start at the bottom of the scale and then just taper it towards the tip. And you'll see how this just instantly gives volume to the scales. I do that up here as well, going around the middle area. I just wanna make that middle crest pop. And look, it looks like it's 3D. It's crazy. Last time I did this kind of thing on my chin. This time I wanted to change it up and do it on my forehead. I think it's a lovely effect that looks super 3D. It's kind of crazy how super simple that is to do, but super effective. And on the little horns, I'm gonna kind of shade the bottom half. And I created extra scales where I hadn't painted in white, so I'm gonna have to go and highlight that later. But I'm gonna highlight everything again anyway. The scales that are like too little 
to do just the bottom half, I'm kind of filling them in with a gray, leaving a gap around them. And I have an even tinier and more precise pencil brush that I'm going to use to do these like really tiny scales. Now once I've shaded in all the scales, I'm going to deepen that shading even more by using a black eyeshadow. And today I'm using Void from the Creepy Cute palette by the one and only Shroud Cosmetics. And I'm going to start kind of in the obvious areas that need deepening, which is like right at my crease. And I still, I'm going to do some like eye makeup, like regular glam eye makeup, but I just want the scales to kind of disappear into the crease. And then certain little gaps, I'm just going to fill that in with black, like so. And that just kind of blurs out the edges a little bit. You don't see like the outline anymore. And I'm also going to do that around certain scales, wherever I want to just deepen that, kind of create a bigger gap between the scales. And then I'm just going to fade that into my hairline. And then, for example, in between these scales, probably just going to fill this in with black. I was going to do smaller little scales, but I don't know. I might just fill this here and then slowly just fade that into my skin. Then I might have to like get rid of all this that I've got going on here. I'm gonna have to fix that with like some concealer or something. But for now I'm just filling this in with the black. I'm just taking it on a fluffier brush so I just run it under my eyes. Okay, I'm pretty happy with the shading so far. Now I'm just gonna take a Q-tip and get rid of these white smudges that I ended up not needing. Being careful not to get black all over the place like I just did. Probably gonna have to go back with some concealer and fix this area up because now I'm just all smudged and that's no good. I am just very quickly taking some of my concealer and just fixing up around the scales so that it looks neat. Now that that's all cleaned up, I'm gonna take the Mehron Clown White Light to do some further highlighting. And I'm gonna take that on a little tiny lip brush. And the reason I'm using this is that it has a different consistency and opacity than the NYX SFX Cream Paint. And by the way, going back to the cream color, I didn't notice a difference between this and their old formula. It might be different, I don't know. I thought it was good. And I'm going to use this to highlight the highest points of the scales. So this is really what's going to make everything pop. Although I will be doing one more form of highlighting because there's just a lot of steps when doing something like this. And you have to do multiple types of highlighting to get it to look right. And I'm also using this to kind of like fix up certain areas that I may have smudged. And then on these big scales right here, I'm going to do a line like right in the middle, how I did with the shading, and then just blend it upwards. And that will really help make it look as if these are 3D. Same down here. I'm also using it to highlight the bigger scales. I might have to shade again, but it's a process. Now before I do the last step, I want to try something and I hope it'll work and it won't take away the dimension that I did. If it doesn't work, I guess I'll just cry, but I'm going in with a silver loose pigment. This is from the Naked Cosmetics Mother Nature stack and I'm going to take this and then very carefully I'm going to grab some on a little fluffy brush and I want to apply it on certain scales to make them look shiny. I don't know if this is going to get rid of everything that I did. I've actually never used this pigment before, so I don't know how opaque it is. I don't know how shiny it is, but I'm just gonna go ahead and apply it in the middle of the scales. I think that works. I don't think that's too bad. And the reason I'm not just doing it all over everything is because if this gets on top of the black lines, then that'll definitely erase them. And I don't want that happening. But let's see here. Uh, yeah, see, it kind of gets rid of the shading and highlighting. And I don't want that. I still want that shading coming through. So I might, instead of using this brush, I'm going to use another really tiny pencil brush so that I can just hit like certain areas, let's say the mid-tones, without disturbing the shadows and the highlights. So there's like something there, but it doesn't get in the way of everything else. This actually works pretty nicely as a mid-tone, so it kind of just blends the shadow a little bit more. And in certain cases, that's not a bad thing. But in other cases, I just want a really stark contrast. Like here, I might add some 
on the half that has the shadow above the highlight. Whoops, I got that on the black line. I can just go back and fix that. I'm actually gonna use the House Labs Glam Attack and Flash. Just take it on this little pencil brush and then I can do the really tiny scales. There we go. And that allows me to highlight them pretty well. Okay, I think I like this a little bit better. I can be more precise with the application. And with this product, I'm actually able to highlight with the silver, which I think works a little bit better. Especially on these like little teeny tiny scales that are just kind of gap fillers where it's hard to reach them with a powder product, you have to go in with a liquid. And that's what I'm gonna be doing next. I was gonna do white highlights, but first I wanna do these silver ones just to like add a little something because otherwise it's just like a black and white thing but this at least gives it a little bit of sheen maybe i should have filled everything in with silver and then highlighted and contoured hmm i am now just realizing that that probably would look a lot cooler have a better effect and be all around a little bit more shimmery but um i didn't really think of that so <laughs> This is what we're doing. Now I've done the silver all over and it overlapped some of the lines. So I'm just going back in and fixing those lines that I overlapped. Now as a last step, then we can move on to the eyes and lips. I'm gonna take my white wool face paint and do the last bit of highlighting. And now this I'm taking it on a really, really teeny tiny brush because it's going to allow me to do really precise highlighting and I'm taking it just on the highest and brightest points and just making the highlights there like super crisp. So I'm doing this like around edges where I really want to define the division between scales, doing this especially on the little ones. But basically just like tracing the tops of all the scales and the bottom of some. And this is like a little tiny detail, but this is what makes all the difference. You'll see once I'm done with this, it'll really have completely transformed everything. You can really define the little ones, especially the scales that are right next to an area that's just filled in black. This will really help to define the shape of the scales. And then here on the big ones, I'm actually going to use that right in the middle as well to really accentuate that highlight. This is something that's done really often in cosplay in armor pieces. It looks kind of cartoony, but it looks amazing in photos, just doing these like white highlights. Okay, now this part is done. Now I can move on to eyes and lips, and for the eyes, I'm just going to do a quick all over base using the one size eye popper in the color death drop and this is just a black glittery liquid eyeshadow and I'm just going to apply that all over this is going to be the base for my eye color and I'm just going to lightly blend that out a little bit and I'm gonna apply it under the eye too. Liquid eyeshadows are a super quick and easy way of just getting color really fast on your eye with really good coverage. And it gives you a base for your powdered eyeshadows if you wanna apply some on top. Now on top of that, I'm going with the Ritual Defee Crystalline Matter Eye Soot in the color Ceruleum. And it is the most stunning like duochrome and it's got like bits of shimmer in it. It's just like so stunning. I've actually never used it. I'm just going to take some out with my nail, just picking it up with my finger and applying it all over the lid. Oh boy. Oh, that is so stunning. This is so gorgeous. And I just wanted to have like at least a pop of color on my lids since everything else is very subdued. And I accidentally got some under my eyes, so I'm just gonna run with it and just apply some right there. Because why not have the whole eye area be super, super shimmery and glittery. Then also from Ritual Defeat, I'm taking the color Pixis. And I love this for my inner corner. It's like a white with a blue shift. And it is just so intense. It's actually better once it's spread out. I applied it a little too concentrated. It really shines once you spread it out. 
and I feel like that just draws a bit more attention to the eye area by illuminating that inner corner. Now I'm just going to tight line my eyes with a black liner. This is the Milk Gel Liner in the color Boss. This is my favorite pencil for tight lining because it's so tiny. You can get right in there. And I'm going to make sure to really work it into the lash line. I don't want any skin peeking through. And I'm torn between like a really dark purple lip or one that matches my eyes. I'm gonna try the one that matches my eyes first and it's Mermaider from Black Moon Cosmetics. I know that I used this recently in another Halloween tutorial, my rhinestone skull one, but I kind of really like it. I don't know if it's too much though. It might be a lot. I know this is weird to say, but I feel like if I match the lipstick to the eyes, it's gonna feel very like carnival makeup, if that makes sense. So I don't think I'm gonna go for this. So instead, now for lips, I'm going in with the Black Moon Cosmetics Purgatory. This is just a very, very dark purple lipstick. And even though nothing else is purple on my outfit or my makeup, I just feel like it goes well with what I've got going on up here. I feel like I have a bunch of like black shit around my mouth. I need to fix that. And I'm very much going to overline my lips because whenever I overline my lips, I feel like a badass. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. Now I'm just going to take my contour color again super quick and just refine the nose contour a bit. And I also want to just contour a little bit more under the scales right here. And then I'm just taking a light powder to kind of just highlight this inner part of my face and to powder this area because it gets very oily. I think for highlighter, I'm going in with the Fenty Beauty How Many Carrots highlighter because it's like a pure white and I'm just going to hit my chin, my cupid's bow, and the very tip of my nose. Now that I'm looking at this, I don't know if I should add a gloss to my lips. Hmm, I don't know. While I think about it, I'm gonna do mascara and lashes. Okay, so I've got my lashes on. I used the Miss Fury lashes from Rouge and Rogue, and I kind of feel like I want a gloss, but I wanna, I wanna try it out. If I hate it, I can just wipe it off and keep it matte. So I'm gonna go in with the Tower 28 Chill Lip Jelly. This doesn't have a texture of a traditional gloss. That's why I'm using it. I don't want anything that's like super sticky or anything. I'm just taking that on the back of my hand and using my lip brush. Okay, I do like that better. I don't think I've ever layered this on top of a lipstick. I hope it doesn't remove the lipstick, but I have a feeling it'll be fine. Oh yeah, yeah, there we go. Okay, Okay. now I'm gonna go get dressed, let my hair down, do all the things I gotta do, and then I'll come back to show you the finished look. And this is the finished look. Almost. At the photo shoot, when I meet up with Michelle, she's going to give me some armor that she's made herself. So I'm going to have these big shoulder pieces. I'm also going to have a corset on. I don't have it on right now because you can't see that part of me. <laughs> and I want it to be comfortable. But I'm thinking that like my ears are too bare and I thought about putting like prosthetic ears, but I didn't think it looked right. I tried a million different earrings. They didn't look right either. So instead what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some black face paint and I hope that I don't hate this, but I kind of I just want to dry brush some black onto my ears. Almost like war paint, but not really. Like, I don't really know. I just want it to be like streaky and it doesn't have to make sense. It just has to look cool. You know what I mean? Kind of cancels out my ears, but not really. You still see them there. It's just a little something. I don't know. I don't know what to call it. So I just pieced together a costume. I basically bought these accessories off of eBay. You can find them on Amazon as well. It's just like a kid's dragon costume and it's a mask that I tightened onto these horns. You can't see, but I've got two more horns up there. And then these little wings, I really wish they were bigger. I didn't really think about it. I didn't try to get bigger wings. I don't know. And then it also comes with a tail. And then I'm just wearing a dress from Killstar and I'm going to be wearing corset from Castle Corset tree and I've owned that corset for like four years and I still have never taken pictures in it so today's finally gonna be the day. I am wearing pasties by the way under this dress. I still gotta put my fake nails on and rings and everything but I'm waiting to put the nails on last like right before I leave the house but yeah I am super excited to get to the photo shoot. I've always wanted to shoot with Martin and uh 
Great, I've got lipstick on my teeth. And I know that the color kind of clashes a little bit, but I feel like the color of the mask kind of blends with my hair. And then because this is lighter, it just draws the focus to the face rather than to my headpiece, which I prefer having the focus be right here. I mean, I did go through all this trouble after all. And I had thought about using prosthetics for this look, but ultimately I thought, you know what? My specialty is just painting, so I'm just going to do it without prosthetics because prosthetics can get really expensive. And my ultimate goal is to teach you something that you can actually do and attempt. And prosthetics are really out of reach for some people. You might not have access to them where you live. So I decided to stick to just paint and makeup. So I hope you enjoyed it. Now I'm gonna head over to the photo shoot and I'm gonna bring you along with me. that was a little behind the scenes of the photo shoot. I hope you liked seeing what it was like. We just took pictures around downtown Pasadena. There's some great locations that look kind of like a castle, so it was perfect for the shoot. Be sure to follow me on Instagram if you don't already, if you want to see the photos from this shoot, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so, so much for watching. Thank you so much to all my patrons who support me, and I'll see you next time. Bye!